You're still good. Yeah. You're still God. You're still good. You're still God. You're still good. And you're still God. You're still good. And you're still God. You're saying you're still good. You're still God. about Elder Tiger and like Elder Carrick and different ones and how they talk about when they was growing up, they always was made to be at church. Yeah. They always had to come here. They could never play with their buddies because of uh, somebody hollering for them to come into church so they could have service. Well, see, this is the thing about me. Growing up, I never had to be at church. I was never forced to be at church. Yeah. I wanted to be here at church. I had a desire at a young age to be here. Yes, sir. You know, my mom, she could tell you, she's sitting back there. My mom, <laughs> she, grew, she grew up in the church, of course. Yeah. And, yeah. and she couldn't stand it. <laughs> tell on her, tell on her. She could not stand it. I mean, my grandma, if she had to clean the church, if she had to cook the church, prepare for dinners every Sunday, every Wednesday, every prayer meeting, my grandma was dragging my mom. And my mom did not like that. So when she got old enough to make her own decisions, guess what? She got out of church. <laughs> and when she, she got out of church, she, she stayed, you know, out of church for a while. So... You know, I was born, I came around, and so I'm the oldest of three siblings. I had a brother and a sister. So when it was church time, I always wanted to go to church with my grandma. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, well, what is that? Because my brother and sister, they, want, they didn't care if they was here or not, you know. <laughs> but I, I always wanted to go because I had a love for God because I don't know what it was about just being here, just being around the saints, just being amongst different ones. What was it about that that I wanted to be? You know, back in the day, I used to, I don't know what it was. I loved it, but I don't know what it was at the time that made my grandma run around this church, blowing whistles and stuff. I don't know what that, I was like, what are you doing? I didn't know. Blowing, blowing whistles and carrying on like a, like a Tasmanian devil. I didn't know. <laughs> but I just knew I was here. You know, I had a love for music. I had a love. To, I used to love to come to hear the choir sing. At an early age, I was an observer. I used to watch things. I wasn't like a normal child. I used to actually, you know, kind of pay attention to stuff. Back in the day, it used to be a um, like a little stand that Sherry used to direct, you know, stand and direct on the choir. I thought that was amazing. <laughs> I did. I was like, wow. Yeah, it was. I couldn't wait till she stand up there, that she, her arms would be out, it'd be a choir from left to right, and they, they, they about to sing a song. I love to watch it, and they, they sing. So that's what kept me drawn in. I used to love Elder Bradley. When he get to preaching, when he was more youthful. <laughs> he, used to, he used to get up on these pews and, mar and march from the front, march from to back to the front, the back, and... I used to love to watch that because he used to get so hype in the spirit. And see, that's, that's when the zeal was popular. We all had a zeal for God. The zeal was here. And I must say, you know, growing up now, becoming older, I feel like our zeal is not where it should be, and that disturbs me. I want us to get back to having a zeal for God. So we must... 
we must represent this church in and outside of these walls. Even outside, we have to show God who he is. Well, we have to show the people who God is outside of these walls. We have to represent Community Temple in and out of these walls. Not only in here, we have to go out there and we have to minister. We have to love on people. We have to draw these people back in. Because look here, the world is doing everything that it is supposed and designed to do. The world going to be the world. So, but we as people of God, we must um, show them and give, show them our power that we have. And we must show the opportunity to show them who we are. Right. Amen. Amen. Um, so I, I wrote down this here. I said, how can we show them who we are if we are out there just like them? <laughs> how can we show them who we are? If we out there on, just baby. like them, yeah. we have to show ourselves separate. We That's are the people of God. We have to separate ourselves. That's the word. I tell you, I know everybody tired of hearing about it, but I know, and I know I'm tired of hearing about it, but this coronavirus, yeah. you know, it, it has came about and we ran and we hid in fear just like the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What is wrong Come with on, that? Boy. I thought we were supposed to be separate. They, yeah. we, we are running and ducking and hiding just like them. Come but on. I found in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, that says, God has not given us the spirit of fear. Right, right. God has not given us a spirit of fear. So why do we have fear? Why do we have fear? If it says God has not given us a spirit of fear, why do we have it? I just don't understand. You know, we have to get back to our zeal. I'm not, I, and I'm not trying to be, you know, dumb. Let's, we got to obey the laws of the land. So when they say wear your mask to go in the store, wear your mask. Right, you know, right. if they say stand six feet apart, stand six feet apart. Right. Obey the laws of the land, you know, to, to go with what they're doing. But when we come into the house of God, we ought to be praying. We ought to be praying and we ought to be pleading the blood of Jesus and proclaiming yeah, the power yeah. that we have through God. So maybe one day we'll walk out these doors and the coronavirus will be over. But that's if you pray. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's the word. That's, you, the word. that's if you pray. You have to stay, keep your prayer life. Boy, you pray. <laughs> it says, uh, let us get back to our zeal. Let's, let's be excited about what we do. Uh, let's do things wholeheartedly. If we proclaim that the blood would never lose its power, we should never lose our zeal. All right. Yeah. If the blood would never lose its power, we should never lose our zeal. Up here, but we have got to change. We have got to stop living in our blessing. We've got to stop. That's greediness because you can see what you want and you can speak it or get on someone's nerves so bad that you just say, Here, 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 here's your blessing. Okay, just go, just go. And you're under his covering. And I know I sound like I'm playing an old record, but I've heard him say it so many times that some of you have been here 40 years. Amen. And I don't hear you say anything but debate. Mm. All right. <laughs> Speak, Lord. And you're only being blessed because you're sitting in this pew wow. and because you haven't left. Even though your heart's left, your body's still here. God loves you so much that he's still blessing you out of his anointing, out of his covering. That's why people come back because they can't find that covering anywhere else. It has nothing to do with him. It has everything to do with God. And some of you church hop. Some of you go to wherever you can get a blessing at. And you invite people that will bless you, not minister to the souls or win the lost souls or let the miraculous happen, but want to bless the almighty dollar. And that doesn't do God no good because he has all the money he needs. We lack. We lack because we're comfortable sitting here on our phones and talking and whispering and doing this and that, that we don't even hear God speak. It bypasses us. And then we get home and we wonder, oh, 
What was that again he said? Oh, okay. The definition, the definition of miraculous is something provided by divine intervention or something unexpected and wonderful by supernatural or uncommon causes. But see, they failed. They put by a little g-o-d. But let me change this around because the supernatural and the uncommon causes our God to move and do things that no other little G can do. God's the only one. The only one. And if you don't believe me, it talks about miracles. It says it's produced by God's power in Acts 15, 12. It's produced by Christ's power in Matthew 10, 1. All right. It's produced, ready, by the Spirit's power, Matthew 12, 28. If it's produced, it's already made, and he's within you. I heard him asking this morning and talking about the Holy Spirit. And I just had a vision of people that were filled. Truly, don't lie. Don't lie in the house of God. What you do out there is one thing, but don't lie in the house of God. We come in here pretending and thinking we have it all together, and we don't. We don't want people to see that we're a hot mess inside, that we're broken, that we need someone just to pray for us, to encourage us. Some of us have stopped coming. Why? Because if they wanted to be talked about, they could stay at home or out there. They come here for safety. You come here because you're tired and you need fed. Manifest God's glory, God's presence, vindicate God, and produce faith. Where's your faith at? Do you have any? Or is your faith like your blessing? It lasts until it runs out. And then you in between again because you're battling. That's a double-mindedness right there. You surely are going to sink. Look what happened to Peter when he got out on the water. Uh-huh. He had faith to go, right. but then yeah. he took his eyes off God. Yeah. Some of you taken your eyes off God. On, Some Amen. of you have already blocked out everything in this service today. Right From the time you found out and walked in the door that I was up here, and that's okay. I love you too. Trust, trust, I love trust. you. Trust. So that you won't flip over. And destroy something that you could have had had you just stood still and trust in the Lord and lean not to your own understanding. Uh-huh. That's where we mess up at. And my sister came out of the accident with nothing, no damage. I call her every day, praise God. I call her every day just to check on her because I want to make sure that nothing happens after that tragic accident she said i'm just a little sore but she yet moving around god yet blessing her god yeah, yet delivering yeah. her god yet taking the bitterness out of her because she did like moses did she finally got up out of here and obeyed god it's important to be obedient Amen. it's bad to be disobedient so we must learn to trust in the lord the third one is delight delight is please Please uh, someone greatly, to please someone greatly, and to commit, pledge, or bind a person or, or bind to a person or organization to a course or a pol- It's like a course or a policy. So we have a policy with the Lord. The covenant which God made with the children of Israel is yet reigning on us. Those that receive Christ as their personal Savior, we are connected to the covenant and we are part of the covenant now which is a policy that God has given us if we would delight ourselves in the Lord now in case you might not understand delighting in the Lord it's similar to trusting in the Lord you want to as you trust him 
you want to delight yourself in the word and eat more and more of it. And when you do, you want to share it. You want to pray for somebody. You want to lay hands on somebody, being active in the will of God, doing what God right. sent right. you to do. And right. if God don't say do it, please don't operate in Amen. self. Stand still and know that he is God. God will direct your path. If you delight yourself in the Lord, a lot of times delighting, um, I used to get attacked while I would do hair and they would say stupid stuff to me. And I'd be like, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I wouldn't say it out loud, but I go inside myself and I just pray and pray and pray. I'd be crying inside my spirit and I just be laying the hair out. I'd be like, Lord God, Jesus. And they steady, steady the customer. You know, just going off on me for no reason. I'm like, Lord God, but I'm steady doing it here and steady doing it here. And finally they got done. And then the next time they come and they have a problem, and I'll be steady doing it here. I said, let me take you in the back and pray for you. Well, while I was doing that, people had problems with that. Mm -hmm. But I was obeying God. It doesn't matter what they say. What matters is what God say, but you do it decent and in order. The enemy is going to try to block you and say things, but yet be encouraged and obey God and do it in decency and in order. That way it doesn't cause any more hardship along the way. That was okay. Number four, commit. Oh, that was. I'm sorry. You know, I bind, I put commit and delight together. That's my fault. Commit is the pledge, the covenant. And uh, delight was pleasing someone greatly. We want to please God greatly. Our, our objective is to please God, not man. Right, right. Don't be getting up here trying to be a one girl wonder, Sonia. <laughs> Don't be getting up here trying to lay hands on everybody if you ain't being led by God. Sonia, who do you think you are? You are not God. Let God be God and you just obey. That's walking in the spirit of obedience. If your gift hasn't developed to that point, whereas the God leads you to lay hands on somebody, but you in the spirit, but he ain't told you to, but you just in the spirit and you going out, Whoa, come here. no, 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 wisdom. We have to have wisdom and operating of our gifts in the Lord. When you mature in your walk in the Lord, God will gracefully give you how to operate when you're up ministering to the people of God. God will give you souls. He would direct you if you listen to him and if you wait patiently on the Lord, he will show you how to minister to the people and he will give you to do a prayer line. If he don't give it to you, please don't do it. It's not your season. It's not your time. But if you just wait patiently on the Lord after you fret not, after you learn to trust, after you learn to delight, after you learn to commit, God will direct your path. Yeah, yeah. Then after you did all those wonderful things, just rest in the Lord. Relax. Yeah, yeah. Recover. Yeah. Recover. Yeah. Recover. Yeah. Recover. Yeah. Recover. Yeah. Recover. Yeah. If you're getting weak. God is good. See, I can, like see, I can stand here. You know, with 50 right in front of me, <laughs> with 50 right in front of me, that God is good. And I can tell you right here, right now, in August the 15th, that if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I would be. How many know the Lord gives you new mercies every day? Just holler back at me, mercy. Okay, watch this. Now sit down, mother. I ain't, I ain't trying to. I'm just. I just wanna. I just wanna go over the little Bible study me and the pastor had last week. So watch this because this is why it's about to get better. This is why it's about to get better because His mercies are new every morning. That's why, you know, 
we was in Sunday school this morning, and Mother looked at me to say something. I didn't want to say nothing. I said, I want to say it right here that, that this is why I know it's going to get better because his mercies are new every morning. Every morning, God renews his mercy. No matter how ratchet you were last night. <laughs> This morning, you were met with new mercy. <laughs> and what Jeremiah wants you to understand is the reason you go, it's going to get better is because God's giving us another day. <laughs> and too often, too often we take for granted, you know, waking up this morning. Too often we take for granted that God didn't wake us up. Today, it, it just... just you didn't come here on Sunday to deal with the struggles you had on Saturday because of his new mercy every day. He didn't wake you up to think about all the problems you had or what you did last night because this morning you were met with new mercy. Shout back at me, new mercy. Hallelujah. So then whenever God wakes you up to a new day, you know, that's where you got to get up and say, thank you, Lord, for a new day. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. So it, that's not enough. So, so this is what Jeremiah says. He said, wait for it. That today is going to be the day that's going gonna, gonna to get a little bit better. It is of the Lord's mercy. God woke you up to new things. Maybe you don't feel it like I feel it, but just like, let me tell you what the Apostle John said. Beloved, it does not yet appear what we shall be because God ain't finished yet. The word consume doesn't mean to die. <laughs> it means to me, it, it, it means to me it's, it's over. So Jeremiah says, because if, if the, of the Lord's mercies it ain't over yet. The story, the story is not over yet. The last verse hasn't been written yet. The last chapter of your life haven't been written yet. It does not yet appear what it shall be because the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. So let me finish here, Brother Cedric, Deacon Cedric. Let me finish here. And the reason it's about to get better because his compassion failed not. That makes me feel good, Ella Taylor. His compassion fell not. Yeah, yeah. Jeremiah realizes the reason why Israel is being destroyed is because they've disobeyed the will of God. And Israel been, you know, low down as like low as low down can be. They not only disobeyed God, but they've they enjoyed it. So we, and we talked about that in Sunday school this, this morning. We're enjoying that sin that you keep repeating doing. It's one thing to live in sin. It's another when you, when you like it. You know, so Israel, they, they, they've enjoyed living in sin. And, and they, they deserve to die. But here's, here's what Jeremiah found out. But his compassion... Fail not. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No matter how low, you know, we sink, we never underestimate God's compassion. Yes. We never underestimate God's love. Yes. Don't let the devil make you think that, you know, somewhere along the, along the line that because of what you've done, that God has given up on you. So I came here to declare to you that his compassion fell not. Yes. Let me tell you why God is God and, and I'm not. Because we live in this flesh. We human, we call it. No matter how much I love you or we love one another, we have a limit. <laughs> no matter how good you are to me or we are to each other. Yes, sir. There's a line in the sand. That no matter how much we do mean to each other, yes. 
You violate them boundaries. We both do. You'll find out. That's why it taught me today, this morning, when, when the pastor said he got up out there. Just for me Many doors you've closed Just for me Sometimes you will say no So I'll be Tested in your fire To purify my desires So my blessings won't be Just for me So caught up in myself Praise with Superintendent Henry J. Bradley Jr. Saturday at 1 p.m. Sunday morning worship at 11.15 a.m. and midweek Bible study Wednesday at 6 p.m. A church in the community for the community showing the love of God to the community. Superintendent Henry J. Bradley Jr. Senior Pastor and Elect Lady Alice Bradley. <laughs>